Well, good evening, it's Mark Traversonia here at Saturn Magic and we're live with another Saturn Magic Live for you. Unfortunately, there was no live yesterday because we were there, Kieran and myself were there at the Bristol Day of Magic. We had a fantastic day. Uh, it was full. I didn't get to see any lectures or show. Well, I got to see Kieran's lecture because uh, I set a little table up with his uh, stock there, but I didn't get to see, unfortunately, any of the lectures. They had John Allen uh, lecturing, uh, Ken Dye, Kieran, uh, and then they got the dealers during the day, of which we were one, and uh, they had a show in the evening, which unfortunately I had to make my way back here, and uh, so did unfortunately get to see the show. But uh, no, a great day there at the Bristol Day of Magic, so if you came and said hi there, thank you very much, and uh, thank you for everyone that bought stuff from us there too. Uh, so tonight, uh, in tonight's show, um, we're going to run down a few things, so a few back in stock uh, notices for you. So I heard something beep there, which means... I was wondering where my phone is actually, uh, but anyway, it doesn't matter. Be around here somewhere. Uh, a few back in stocks. Uh, the Venom Cube by Henry Harrius is uh, back in stock. Also, the Mini Cube to Chocolate. And uh, we were momentarily out of stock of the watch by Joe Miranda, but that is now uh, back in stock uh, again. Uh, actually, I will mention about the watch. Uh, we did put an email out uh, when we announced this live actually uh, that there is a new bonus video. Uh, that I've put on which shows you uh, how to do uh, something to your watch um, so that um, you know it it's not necessary to be done but some people might like it and it's quite a good improvement so if you bought the watch from us and you've looked at the bonus page ideas uh, then get back on to the bonus page because you've now got a third video on there with some extra information so have a look at that so uh, good evening everyone uh, good to see, uh, good to see you all jumping in there. It's a Monday night, so a bit of a change from the usual uh, day. Uh, so tonight we're going to be talking about uh, flat pack. We're going to be talking about True X uh, Stream. Uh, we're going to talk about the VIP Pass, uh, Money Maker, uh, Killer Forks, and uh, Prosecco. So quite a few things there to talk about. Plus anything else uh, that you'd like to chip in with, and um, you know, hopefully I might be able to answer the questions for you. Uh, so uh, here at Saturn Magic, we are the shop with stock. Uh, that's our little hashtag that was invented uh, here at Saturn Magic. Uh, we stock what's hot and don't stock what's not. <laughs> How about that? I've just made that up. Uh, the, um, so the idea is, is we keep, uh, and someone came in uh, the shop and said, you know, amazing everywhere. Look here, there's good working tricks. Uh, there is no end to choose from. Uh, and of course, we've got lots of other things available to order on the website. But anyway, on with... Um, tonight's uh, live just seeing if we've got any immediate comments but uh, hi good evening everyone uh, so the first thing we'll talk about has just been made live on the website at uh, just gone eight o'clock this evening so it's been live for less than an hour and i've just had to order some more <laughs> so in less than an hour we've uh, sold, sold out of what i thought we would sell in the first week which is pretty scary really uh, considering um, it's always hard to judge what's going to be popular and when I saw this I thought God, that's a neat idea it really really is we're talking about flat pack by Jason Knowles uh, when you look at it uh, just imagine taking your wallet out of your pocket um, or, or something small and flat out your little credit card holder or whatever you've taken it out of, out of there and in there you've got a uh, uh, a bicycle card box which is all sort of folded up in half watch the video you get the true visuals all folded up in half and you take it out they can see it's thin folded in half and then it sort of transforms into a full-size deck and then uh, what do you do then yeah you proceed to open the box and take out a full deck of cards it doesn't get any more visual than that uh, now obviously that description um, it's probably a bit how some uh, Sam's Minds trailers would probably play out, actually, because they would probably show you the flat thing springs into a deck and then immediately sort of opening it up with a cut or two along the way. Um, <laughs> the uh, the truth is, is that there's got to be a little bit of uh, shenanigans al along the way, let's say, to be able to achieve that. But if you look at the effect, which is what I mentioned there, uh, take out this folded up card box, clearly nothing there, hold your palm out flat, uh, drop and it transforms into a box uh, and then moments later you can uh, open up the box and take out a full deck of cards and proceed with whatever routine that you want um, so the, the questions are is well uh, you know that's impossible uh, how, how can you possibly do that well it's there's obviously the the thing there that you've got which transforms 
and then you have to do a little bit of magical stuff after that to be able to take the cards out of the box. Uh, the question is how difficult is that, how easy is it, how angle proof is it and really I suppose it depends how you want to do it. Uh, you, you're going to have to, um, it's not like a self-working thing let's say where um, you know you've the, the box the, the box clearly isn't full uh, when you're showing the gimmick so um, you, you know you've got to use um, some misdirection let's say uh, or, or just make them glance away for a moment while you do the dirty work that's required for it then to be a full box uh, now that doesn't mean it's particularly difficult and I, ca I came up with a particular idea thinking about it and uh, it was when I saw like the bonus idea that's mentioned on the trailer uh, where a little packet trick wallet's being used um, to um, you know take the thing out of which is a good good enough place to sort of store it and it's it, it, I wasn't too happy with that for various reasons I don't really want to go into that uh, in too much detail on like an open video uh, but it made me think that the wallet that I actually prefer to use uh, when I'm performing is the Harry Robson instant reset wallet and anyone that knows that wallet knows that it's like a gentleman style wallet, you know, fairly big um, rectangular kind of wallet, a little bit wider than the JOL wallets, but a JOL, wallet, a JOL uh, type wallet would work as well. Uh, you could keep the gimmick in the wallet. So you can take your wallet out of your pocket, uh, open up the uh, thing, take out the, um, uh, the thing, you could transform it on the wallet. So you could just drop the deck uh, so it transforms into the, into the deck on the wallet. Uh, then you could just quite simply uh, say to somebody, right, now we've got a deck of cards and you gesture towards somebody and say, you know, whatever the person's name is over there, right, name any playing card that you want. And that may, you could involve other people and do the old thing where name a red, black and all that, you just, you know, and eventually pick a card. And at some point while they're deliberating on what card they want, because you're just stood there with the, the box on the, on the wallet, you just casually... Um, take it off, put your wallet away, and you then just open the box and say, yeah, right, okay, let's have a look. Okay, we'll use that one then. Uh, and then proceed with any card trick you want that needs a signed card. Now, the amount of time you take for that deliberation, you might not want to leave so much time, because I think maybe saying a red card, black card, hearts, diamonds, high, low, I think well, you, you could have done anything during that time. So it might be just as well to say, uh, you know, it transformed into a box. Right, uh, Dave, name any playing card. And um, Dave goes, Arr. and in that moment when he's going, Arr, and everyone's looking at him, um, you're then there with a box and you open up the box and just take out the deck of cards. Uh, as you get more proficient with it, then you'll get braver and you probably won't need that little moment of ex um, misdirection, let's say, to uh, you know get done what you need to do. Um, so uh, quite liking that from the, and it comes ready-made, uh, the gimmick, quite liking that idea that you get the box, uh, get a nice sort of tough box, open it up, phone lined with the gimmick in. Uh, I haven't actually got one here myself, but I've seen a video showing it all. And um, it's all uh, sort of very well made, uh, put together. It is ready made for you, ready to go out of the box. Uh, there is only one fairly puzzling negative actually, uh, for me anyway, uh, and that is it comes ready made in blue bicycle box. Uh, and uh, Jason says he, has it made in blue? He has, he had it made in blue bicycle, uh, because that is his uh, card um, color of choice. That's what he performs with blue bicycles. So all of the gimmicks have been made in blue bicycle. Now <coughs> that, uh, and this is a release in conjunction with Murphy's Magic as well. So obviously they've helped him with the manufacture. And I'm, I'm just a little bit puzzled how the world's biggest magic supplier can release a trick in conjunction with a magician and have it made and yeah you you know what happens if he liked pink bicycle cards would he have done it in a pink you know box and with all that pink boxes uh, i just don't get it that the bulk of the market for magicians is red bicycle cards but this gimmick is only available in blue which um is a little bit puzzling. Uh, what I would say though is, uh, and I've, I've said to this, um, I haven't mentioned it on a live at all, but I've said to quite a few people when I've been talking to them, there's no reason why you can't keep red cards in a blue box. Uh, you know, we're a bit hung up on that as magicians, that red box, red cards. 
uh, and so on but really it is just a card box so <coughs> if it, they do show you by the way and, and I will mention this now they do show you how to customize the box for any box that you want so if you don't even use bicycle cards uh, they show you what you do to uh, customize it and uh, I won't go into detail but if, if you think that you've got a gimmick that's ready-made and you want it to be a different color a different make or whatever um, you're not going to make a brand new gimmick you're going to customize the one you've got so there's really only one way that you can customize it so you know you can um, you know uh, assume for yourselves the way that that's done and depending on how neat or good you are at doing that will be tend to will depend on how good your gimmick looks at the end of it so uh, my view is is I think that's going to look pretty naff actually if you end up doing yourself a makeover on what you get um, so personally I would just say well it's a you know stunning visual effect just get over the fact that it's blue crazy decision in my opinion uh, but um, you know just use it and if you happen to only like red cards well just put a deck of red cards in there in a blue box and you know it doesn't matter where you go and uh, so flat back from Jason Knowles yeah I like it um, gonna get hold of one as soon as I can myself because I can see it's something that I would use uh, putting it in the uh, in the instant reset wallet as I said I've got the zipper compartment on one side of the wallet and I can see the flat packs it luckily on that wallet on the right hand side there's a sort of uh, pocket behind the credit card slots and I can see me sliding the flat pack in there and it's a great uh, we're, we're always looking for way well I'm always looking for ways and I think a lot of magicians are as well that they're looking for ways to um, not not just do a trick you know when you do a trick for someone and you think yeah good trick but to have little moments of magic along the way and that's so you're, st you're still going to do any old card trick you want because the cards come out 52 normal cards uh, so you can still do any old card trick you want after you've uh, pulled the cards out but you've had that nice you know before you've even done anything with the spectator so uh, you know what can I say if you like the look of the video uh, understand that you're going to have to work at it a bit to uh, get the cards rung in uh, but as long as you're not opposed to that little bit of practice uh, to do that you can use that little bit of misdirection that I mentioned in the early days just to give you that little bit more, more confidence to do it uh, but I think once you get it down uh, you'll even be doing it without that bit of uh, misdirection so I uh, sort of get uh, two thumbs up there for Jason Knowles's uh, flat pack so good evening everyone let's have a quick look at um, any questions we have here uh, our question there about from um, about uh, where are we nailed it about uh, refills nailed it's a great smash and stabbed actually we, uh, we uh, keep it in stock here at uh, Saturn Magic uh, it is our smash and stab um, routine of preference let's say because there is literally zero risk of injuring yourself uh, if you've bought nailed it uh, then there is a bonus page uh, it's and the link will either be on the product page or on the left hand side in the information box it says bonus pages uh, if you go on there find nailed it click on that and the uh, part number that's on the invoice is the um, bonus page and where you're saying about re refills there um, there's links etc for uh, refills and what I use for the bags because the, it's all produced in America so everything's not sort of readily available in this country due to sizing or manufacturers stuff being slightly different in one country to the other uh, but I give you the links and uh, tips extra tips as usual uh, for things that I personally do so yeah nailed it uh, went off on a bit of a tangent there but I just saw the question about nailed it uh, great smash and stab routine from Scott Alexander not cheap uh, but in my view uh, the best on the market and great for a stand-up and um, performance thing also the bonus page also goes into how to do it 360 degrees uh, surrounded not that many people perform in that kind of situation but sometimes you have got people just to your sides and using the uh, method as shown in the video uh, if people are sat to your sides you, you know you could get a little bit caught out so the way that we do it or the way that I do it which is on the bonus page means that if you've got people to your sides then uh, or even 360 uh, then you're absolutely covered uh, to do the routine so yeah a little bit of a, a divergence there on the nailed it by Scott Alexander but to uh, check that out um, actually bias pad by Scott Alexander as well uh, I haven't actually mentioned that on one of the lives 
uh, if you like the add a number type thing, uh, the bias pad is well worth checking out from uh, Scott Alexander. That's a, a good item, actually. I should think about talking about that uh, in another live. Uh, well, I've mentioned it now. Uh, so if you like that uh, stand-up type thing, it's like a, a nice binder with uh, post-it notes inside. Uh, and you can do an add a number type routine and the spectator can open up the pad themselves and take the sheet off and give it to you to add it up. So it's a nice... Um, there's lots of add a number pads where the, the, the uh, magician stroke mentalist is in control of the pad. Uh, but um, the bias pad gives that a little bit more freedom for the performer, let's say. And you can say to the person on the front, well, rip off the sheet and you know, give it to me and you, know, you can add it up. So it's just not... Just really, we're always looking for them little bits of extra and refinements. And if you do an add a number, then it's well worth looking at the uh, at the bias pad by Scott Alexander. Uh, if you do that kind of stuff. Okie dokie. So on to uh, the next item today, and that's uh, TRU Extreme from Many Lindenfeld. Uh, now Many has been um, has had some really good solid releases over the years. Uh, I must admit, one of the first ones when we opened the shop was the self-bending paperclip, and that was a very, very Marmite trick. Uh, you either love it or hate it. Uh, I must admit, the method was, uh, and what you got and everything was, you know, pretty, almost James Bondy, almost, the way he sort of, uh, well, James Bondy. It was a nice gimmick, anyway, that you got to do what you needed with the paperclip, uh, and quite an ingenious method to actually do it as well. There was also a sort of ungimmicked kind of version as well, which was very nice, uh, where you could uh, put the paper clip in a glass and swirl it and it would end, which was uh, really cool. Uh, and I'm trying to think what he did after that, actually, but uh, the next one of note that I can remember from him uh, was his coin bender, the ox bender, uh, which is an excellent, uh, excellent gimmick uh, for bending coins. Uh, then TRU, the first version, uh, was received extremely well uh, in the magic world, and now we have TRU Extreme. Now, I'll be honest, I'm not a magic band uh, performer, uh, magic band, rubber band magic performer. Uh, I don't, other than Crazy Man's handcuffs, that's about the only magic um, rubber band trick that I know. Um, the, uh, but I did, uh, I've got a, a true extreme uh, here on my on my desk uh, you get a bag of rubber bands with it as well to get you going uh, they're the Joe Rheinflech uh, rubber bands uh, there we go I knew my phone was around here somewhere let's turn that off uh, we also stop the Rheinflech rubber bands we keep packs and these let's just grab some uh, so and they're quite a cheap price they're less than 20 pounds I think they're about 15 pounds from memory uh, but look, you get loads and loads of rubber bands. They're definitely the best uh, rubber bands on the market. And, but you get a few uh, black ones. Uh, you don't need black uh, to do the trick. You can use any old colour you want. Um, but uh, So we keep packs of the rubber bands. Uh, we keep the rainbow colour in stock. Um, is it rainbow? We've got some yellow ones as well. Uh, rainbow and yellow uh, we actually have in stock. Um, those are the two most popular. Uh, but there's lots of other colours uh, that they do as well because we, uh, in fact all the colours that are in the rainbow packet you can order individually if you've got a favourite rubber band. Uh, so I said I'm not a rubber band uh, magic person myself uh, but I've sat down, I haven't actually watched all of the video yet on True Extreme because I haven't had time but I, I watched the uh, base method and principle uh, to the one where he's got his finger and he's holding the rubber band and it penetrates through his finger. Uh, all all of the um, things on the um, on the thing I believe are using the same uh, sort of basic kind of setups. Uh, those of you that are into your rubber band magic uh, know that um, you, there's various uh, get readies that you need to do uh, to do various rubber band routines. So uh, you watch a video, you see what the setup is, and it all seems very awkward let's say when you first start it's one of those things where you need to build up that muscle memory with practice uh, to be able to get in and out of that setup very quickly but if you do rubber band magic already you'll know that that's the case for almost every rubber band trick um, there is uh, just about other than crazy man's handcuffs which is you know very easy open kind of setup uh, but most rubber band tricks in need you to set up 
and you'll know what I mean by that if you do rubber band magic. So there I was watching the uh, thing, how to set it up. I actually smiled to myself when I saw the way that he sets it up and thought, I, I thought, really? And then when I did it, I thought, wow, that's pretty clever, that works. And then when you're sat there in front of you with your rubber bands and your finger ready to uh, like do a penetration on it, and you just sort of, when you watch the trailer, you like look, you get that moment on the trailer where before I got the explanation, I thought, well, how on earth is he doing that? And uh, when he um, like penetrates it through and I'm all set up ready to it, and I did it myself and it penetrated through it, it was just like, it was almost like being a layperson yourself when you when you do it and you think, crikey, that's amazing. Now my setup is nowhere near as smooth as it would be to be able to f perform it live. Um, and as I said, I don't really go out there performing rubber band magic, but you guys that do rubber band magic, uh, you're not going to go far wrong. If you like the look of what you see in the video, uh, I think you're going to like uh, True Extreme from uh, Many Lindenfeld. So uh, check that one out if you're into your rubber bands. Okie dokie. Okay, Anthony's saying about the On The Money deck by uh, Gavin James. Yeah, that was listed on the, um, uh, that was listed on the website in about the last week. Um, all I can say about that actually is if you like the look of the trailer and like what it does, then you're not going to be disappointed with the product. It's one of those things where you've got a gimmick deck and the gimmick deck does all the work for you. So there's no skill really involved to do that. Well, there isn't any skill involved to do that trick because it is just a gimmick deck. So learn how to uh, control the deck and uh, learn the routine and away you go. So, um, you know, it's a, a good, uh, it reminds me of uh, tricks from, um, I'm not saying it's dated and old, well, it is based on an old trick anyway, to be honest, there's a bit of controversy on that actually, because someone said that it's basically, can't remember the name of the trick actually, but they said, oh, it's basically this trick that's been changed, you know, what will not even really change, just the premise changed. So well, it's exactly the same as another trick. So there's a bit of controversy there. Uh, but um, still there on the market, so maybe they um, made up uh, about if there is any uh, contention, let's say, as to how original it is. Uh, but basically, if you like the look of it uh, and doing that routine, then you're not going to be disappointed with it. It's uh, basically a deck that does the, um, you know, handle, handle it and it does the trick for you. So check that out if you do like uh, the On The Money by uh, Gavin James. Hey, and look who's on, <laughs> Gavin James. Hello. <laughs> uh, right, uh, what else have we got here? Um, where are we next? VIP Pass by uh, Joto. So quite a few questions from me on that one in the past week. Um, and this is another one of the... Oh, no, we're going to come on to uh, another trick where I'm going to say it's another one. There's two tricks tonight which are in the same kind of vein and actually I'll mention the name now it's the next one I was going to talk about which is the money maker from S Magic so we've got those two that came out at roughly the same time and the uh, the spores and against on both of these in and, and it's not necessarily that they're bad tricks there's uh, what I'm saying is is that both of them do what they show in the trailer um, there's you know, they're, they're, they're visual, they're, they're, they're what they are, you know, there's nothing deceiving or uh, there's nothing, you know, no horrible cuts or edits or um, they will do what they show you in the trailer. So you think, well, what's wrong with that then? Uh, the thing that I struggle with, and I'm not saying magic has got to be totally organic and I'm not saying everything you carry around has got to be normal uh, because here's me carrying around, well, block ice is normal, I suppose. Uh, but we carry around a lump of ice, we carry around Rubik cubes, we carry around cannons and shoot stick men out of uh, <laughs> stick men out of them. And um, I'm, try I'm trying to think of some non-organic stuff. I suppose most of the stuff I do carry around is stuff that people would recognise. The thing that I end up getting a little bit of a problem with is when something looks a little bit unusual, um, and people think, "Oh, there must be something dodgy about that." And when you look at the VIP pass, uh, it seems to me anyway, at, at the first uh, onset, that, oh yeah, it's a fairly organic object. Uh, millions of people in this country must wear lanyards to work and they've got their name badge on, you know, hanging there. You see it all the time, people are walking around with them. 
and you go to a concert or an event Bristol Dare Magic yesterday lanyard with the thing on you know the plastic holder so they're around all over the place so you think well oh, this is quite good nice organic prop you've got different inserts that you can put in as well which is nice nicely produced nicely made uh, you know everything's going for it but the thing that sort of gets me is well okay if you were at an event where everyone was wearing a lanyard uh, you're not wearing the same lanyard um, you know yesterday at the Bristol Day Magic everyone a purple lanyard with a little you know C3 plastic thing with the little insert in uh, now if I was there with um, whatever colour that one is with VIP on the front you know you maybe I could say I'm a VIP uh, and I've got a special lanyard much with a much bigger thing than all of you uh, but I thought for one it's not you know the, the VIP pass is never going to fit and there's never going to be anyone else in the room uh, that's going to have a VIP pass either now uh, the thing on the front is just an insert so you could customize it to uh, whatever you want um, so um, you know and again if you're at someone's wedding or a corporate event or uh, someone's birthday party or in a house party um, you could say I got this VIP pass at the weekend or something and you put it on them um, and go ahead and sort of do the trip uh, or um, a, a better idea might be to actually make your own inserts and uh, maybe you could customize them for the event that you're at uh, rather than using the inserts that go with it uh, the thing that I'm saying is I can't really justify the way it comes with the VIP thing it just seems a bit weird um, the uh, method is as old, old as the hills, let's say, the method that's there, but it's very clever, the thinking, the way they've gone into incorporating it into a VIP pass um, and the way it works. Uh, when you um, when they turn the thing round, uh, obviously the item has appeared in like the bottom section there of the uh, pass and you, know, you can tip it out and uh, reveal whatever the item is that's in there. Um, so if you can get around the falseness of the pass and the way it's provided think about maybe customizing it yourself uh, then the VIP pass uh, you know is quite workable usable and uh, you know not a bad item the money maker and I said both of these are kind of together because the VIP wasn't really sort of that organic for me and the money maker falls into the same kind of thing because when you look at the envelope um, you can sort of tell it's not a normal kind of envelope it's more rigid than a normal sort of brown manila envelope the window is also like in the wrong place for any on any rectangular envelope that you've ever seen in your life doesn't have the window uh, in the rectangular way sort of almost in the middle the windows are always if you've got a rectangular envelope the, the, the windows are always rectangular you know on the turned rectangular as well minor point you might say but you know you talk about consistency not wanting to perk people's uh, suspicion um, so you know again just didn't feel that sort of organic and uh, natural to me uh, as far as the gimmick goes it works uh, it's easy to do a uh, child could do it uh, if you want to stand there with uh, an envelope with nothing in it and just in a instant uh, you've got money or something has appeared in there that you can take out and then proceed with your next trick um, then it works perfectly well uh, what I would say uh, is that the envelope is not examinable in any way at all uh, you don't get uh, a dummy one uh, with it so it would have been nice if they would have supplied a dummy one so you could put it in your pocket and if someone said can I have it's, a, it's, it's quite big as well um, when you uh, when you look at it it um, uh, they're using dollars in the advert but you can put English money in there as well so you imagine a note um, you know flat it is, it is quite wide but then it would go in your inside uh, jacket pocket um, but then I wonder how it, it isn't like a manila envelope it's a bit more durable so uh, you know it will last a little while but there'll come a point that obviously you'll then have to buy the gimmick again uh, because it will wear and start to get a bit dog-eared um, the deceptiveness of it and possibly the functionality of it might um, might uh, and again because um, not having used one for any length of time uh, might actually deteriorate over time uh, but you could say that about any paper-based product and if you're using it a lot then obviously and you can justify it you wouldn't mind getting another one um, so again if you can get over the sort of rather strange look of it 
Uh, one suggestion uh, for this, which I thought was a very good one, was to have uh, nothing in the envelope, snap your fingers, and you've suddenly got a stack of uh, whatever, could be lottery tickets, or in my case, it could be $1 bills, uh, and then you can take them out, show that you've got a stack of $1 bills, and then you could then do extreme burn uh, and turn them into something else. Um, there was mention uh, as to whether you could then make them disappear again. Um, not so easy, I wouldn't think, to make them. Di in, f in fact, I'd say uh, I'd say no. Actually, it would be pretty difficult to make them uh, disappear with the gimmick once you've made them appear. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, certainly a good way of making something appear to then go on and use it. Uh, and also, uh, when I always uh, at that point, you shouldn't have someone saying, "Well, let's have a look at that envelope." You you should just like, "Well, let me show you this," and just proceed and carry on. Um, so both of those I'm sort of liking and not. I'm liking them because they're well made, um, they do what they do, um, but both of them sort of just a little bit out of place and I do, I do wonder, um, you know, I do wonder whether people will use them long term, let's say. Uh, a lot of new tricks that get bought, you know, end up in the magic drawer and they end up there for one reason, not necessarily that they're bad, but people look at them and use them and think, no, it's not really for me. Uh, and for me personally, I wasn't really jumping up and down for both of those. But, um, you know, that's just my opinion. And, uh, you know, you guys can make your own mind up. So uh, that's the VIP pass and the, from Johto and the Money Maker from S Magic. OK, Anthony. Oh, yeah, Mimic. Um, we were talking... Uh, I think Anthony rang up the other day and we were talking about uh, Mimic uh, by Sans Minds. Now, uh, that, that's a classic one there where the uh, trailer's cut just in the uh, wrong place for us, right place for them, uh, which isn't unusual for Sans Minds that uh, we, we end up with uh, obviously not seeing the full story. Uh, that, that is one of those things that if you saw what was going on, you would probably um, you know realise. I haven't really thought about it any more than our telephone conversation when uh, I was talking about it and I was saying well there's obviously stuff that's got to go on because you cannot rip the corner off a playing card put it on top of another one uh, and have it fall through and transform into uh, a card uh, it's a bit like the uh, flat pack uh, you can't have a flat box suddenly appear and then it, open it immediately and take out the box of cards you can open it almost immediately with a little bit of something that has to go on after it's um, been done. Uh, and it's the same with Mimic, actually, that, uh, you know, you can get the corner off, put it on. Then there's a little bit of something that has to be done to uh, do that. And uh, I did think, actually, that it, with, um, you know, a little bit of thought. Um, and I haven't actually watched the, the thing on that one because it... Uh, I, was, I was disappointed that they didn't show the performance properly and I, w I wish they had actually done it without any cuts. Um, even if they'd have done it where his hand went out of shot, let's say, momentarily, um, but just did it as one edit, uh, it would have been nice to have seen, because it wouldn't have added much time to the trailer, uh, and to have seen it in real time, even though you wouldn't see when the work was being done, um, I think would have been a real plus for that trailer. Uh, the effect is, you know, quite nice if you like that. Um, the uh, the idea of ripping, a, say, a heart off the fight, one of the hearts off the five of hearts, and then an ace of hearts falls through, um, or maybe it should turn. You could turn it into anything. Actually, it hasn't just got to be the ace of hearts. Uh, but uh, no, a nice, uh, a nice sort of um, idea. Uh, it would be if it was a heart it would have to be one where the heart was sort of in the middle otherwise it would wouldn't sort of look right uh, so it's one of those again where a little bit of something's got to be done in the interim so it's not going to be a self-working thing uh, but what's needed isn't going to be that difficult so that's the uh, mimic from uh, sans minds right so uh, move on to uh, something now that i haven't seen but certainly made me um sort of made me think oh right okay uh, and we've got some of these coming in on what day are we now monday so we've got some of these coming in on wednesday and that's the killer fork uh from sans mines uh it's been released in conjunction with morgan strebler 
Uh, now Morgan Strebler is well known for his excellent liquid uh, metal uh, routine. If you're if you're looking to get into metal bending, then um, liquid metal is the routine that you should get. Uh, there's been various routines from various people released over the years, but really uh, liquid metal is the one, let's say, uh, that you should be looking at. If you really get seriously into your metal bending, uh, then by all means check out other things. But I would say if you're going to start metal bending, then uh, that's the one that you ought to be going to first of all, and then branch out from there afterwards. Now when you're metal bending, you need metal to bend. Now there's been... Um, forks on the market for quite some time uh, that you can do. Uh, there's uh, well-known forks that come in different strengths <coughs> that uh, that you can buy uh, currently. Uh, there's also, uh, over the years, people have gone to just supermarkets and bought cheap cutlery uh, to, uh, to use for bending. And it depends on what bends and things that you want to do because uh, the, the forks will be of various strengths. So um, that's why the magic forks that you can currently buy um, come, are available in different strengths so what I'm looking forward to seeing is what these forks actually look and feel like when they actually arrive so uh, until they're here in my hands I can't say how they feel and look compared to others that are on the market uh, but I thought it was worthy of getting some in uh, to actually look at to do a fair sort of side-by-side -side comparison um, just to see how they feel compared to normal forks I must admit I've I've always been a fan of using supermarket type forks because they always feel like normal forks. Uh, the magic forks that are available, I've always, I've always felt they don't sort of feel, you know, they're still, a, they are a fork and someone's not gonna pick it up and say, oh, that's a magic fork, that is. <laughs> uh, but, you know, knowing what normal forks feel like and you would sort of use even cheap ones, um, the, the magic forks always do seem a little bit strange to me. Uh, and again, I always try and aim for things to be as organic as possible. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if they've improved that uh, if they've improved anything and if the forks look and feel um, like true real forks you know so uh, only time will tell uh, but if you've not spotted that have a look on the website uh, the killer fork from uh, sans mines in conjunction with morgan strebler i will mention at this point they don't teach you anything with it you're literally just buying the forks because if you want to learn how to fork bend uh, as i said you want liquid uh, metal uh, from Morgan Strebler which is the place to uh, to learn from okay uh, right the next item for a uh, discussion tonight is one that um, I, I looked at and thought wow I wonder what method he's using for this uh, and that is Prosecco uh, by Gary James uh, now, if you watch the trailer there, this is uh, an age-old effect uh, of uh, a bit like splash bottle, where you've got the silk and you sort of pull down and there you're stood with a bottle and ding, ding, you know, it's a classic effect for opening uh, at a table or parlour or stage. You can do it anywhere at all. As long as, you, as, long as you're wearing a jacket, you can do it. Uh, so Prosecco. Uh, the key point here is that you're actually producing a uh, champagne flute um, full of Prosecco, presumably, or any wine that you want. And um, I thought, oh, that's interesting, because if you think about the size and shape of a wine glass, um, to you, you can't just put that in a splash bottle gimmick, because you know it's just not going to stay, it's not going to be stable. So uh, I thought, oh, I wonder what he's done for this. Uh, and when I had a look at the gimmick, I thought, wow, that's quite clever, actually. And you just show you how to produce bottles and things from it as well. Uh, I, must, I must admit, I do think the wine glass thing um, is, you know, the, and that's the main thing that he's selling with it. But you can produce other objects as well, uh, as well as the uh, glass of Prosecco. Uh, but if you want to produce, uh, you do have to be careful not to spill it. Uh, unless you put some form of uh, cap on it. So it, it wants to be something that you do reasonably early in your routine. Um, as long as you stood still like I am now, then you'd be fine doing it five minutes later. But if you are the sort of person that moves around a lot, uh, you might want to be um, you know, producing it fairly early on so you don't spill it, unless you put some form of cover over the top to stop the uh, liquid spilling out. Uh, but uh, as far as the gimmick, it looks great. It's very well made and, uh, and does the job. So if you like the look of Prosecco, 
uh, then uh, have a look at that from uh, Gary James. The videos are on the website. Did I see the couple doing a mentalist thing on BGT? No, I didn't see that. No, not at all. I saw the uh, mentalist on the Eurovision, which was, <laughs> it was good to see uh, some mentalism on the Eurovision, uh, uh, Eurovision there. I, I didn't watch the whole final, but I did see the, uh, the, the mentalist on there. Uh, it, it was a bit of a shame they didn't give him more. Obviously, they're not going to give him like 10 minutes to do something. Um, so uh, there must have been some, uh, you know, pre if they were using normal people, let's see, in there, there must have been... Uh, doing everything pre-show let's say for them to then write it down so because i think the effect on the people that were doing it was real although to people watching you probably thought well did they just tell them to write that because everything was just over so quickly but i think you could tell from the looks on the people that were actually doing the routine that they must have thought how did that happen so i think the uh, the things that they actually wrote on the boards for instance and that wasn't the first time he did it i think he did it in one of the previous shows as well i think all of those were genuine things that they had done pre-show or pre to it being televised and it's just a bit of a shame that they didn't uh, show the whole thing but the, uh, the effect was good and it was good to see mentalism being featured on the TV. Okie dokie. Righty ho. So uh, we've got through my list there. Uh, I can't see we've got any more uh, questions on the uh, on the live feed here. So uh, we've got quite a few products there. Don't forget, uh, if you buy anything from Saturn Magic, you get 5% back in loyalty points. You must be checking out as an account holder uh, to get those points. It, not Hardly a week goes by when we don't get people saying, I've got no points, uh, but they've checked out as a guest. I know it's a bit of a pain typing all your details in uh, to create an account, uh, but if you check out as a guest, you have to type your details in every time. So uh, create an account and you only do it the once. Uh, you can also put alternative delivery addresses in and store them there. So if you want it delivered to home or to work or wherever, uh, you can do that. And you get the benefit that you automatically get your um, loyalty points added. And also uh, the amazing bonus pages that I keep saying we do for the various effects. Uh, the passwords are 99% of the time the password, the password is normally the part number that's under the product on your invoice. And we don't expect you to follow your invoices away, but if you've created an account, you can go into your account and you can see all your past purchases and you can just uh, click through them, find the one that's got it and the part numbers will be there uh, for future reference. So another good reason for opening an account at uh, Saturn Magic. So uh, thanks very much for tuning in this evening, a day later than normal on a Monday. Uh, hopefully we'll be back on as normal next Sunday. Uh, but what we normally do is send out an email on the Saturday or Sunday uh, to let you know when the live will actually be. If you're not on our mailing list, then go to the top left hand side of the website, the full size version, and uh, click uh, where it's got uh, club newsletter. Uh, sorry, enter your, your name and your email address in. And uh, if you're not subscribed, that will subscribe you to the uh, newsletter. Uh, if you're new to watching us, there is actually a free effect there on our homepage, uh, top left as such on either the mobile or underneath the offer sort of banner things when you come to the main box that starts listing all the newest products uh, if you've uh, first time stumbling across that and magic there's a free effect there scramble by kieran johnson and myself so if you've not downloaded that uh, then uh, grab hold of that and uh, there's the free effect there on us so uh, thanks for tuning in everybody and i look forward to seeing you all next time